Just before we start, people, I would just like to ask you to click the link in the bio and subscribe to the Patreon. Just for a small amount per month, you can help me grow this channel and create better content. You'll play a pivotal role in providing more documentaries, higher profile podcast guests, diversifying and bringing more variety to the channel. In return, I'll provide early access to all content posted in this channel, exclusive content that won't ever reach this channel, plus exclusive giveaways and much, much more. This channel has great potential in becoming one of the biggest media vessels in the UK, so this is your opportunity to play a part in making that happen. Thank you for your love and support, and enjoy the podcast. Oi, oi, my lovely people. I hope you're having a beautiful Sunday, man. Nice to see you. Nice to see you in such an authentic light. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm not just talking about these bright lights exposing me for who I am. That'd be a fucking great metaphor, wouldn't it? But uh, I'm adjusting this mic, but the thing's not even fucking switched on. So aesthetics. You know what I'm talking about? You see that? See, I've got two cameras now. And there you're there. There you're there. I managed to acquire myself a wee Sony. Just rented right now, but it might be a good possibility that I'm going to purchase it. And I'm enjoying it. See, once you venture into the world of cameras, if you have a day, if you're not really involved in like a content creation sphere like myself, it's just a camera's a camera to you. Like iPhones, great cameras. They, they've just got a lot of fucking simple usage where you just hit record and it does the rest for you. When you venture into the world of more professional, higher quality cameras. It's a fucking navigating a minefield at times. It's great once you start to figure it out, man, but sometimes, I it's uh, it's quite tricky to negotiate. But it's good to be back and good to be chatting to you. I had a fucking really weird dream, right? You ever get a mad dream when it's like a kind of depressing dream? And nothing actually bad happened in it. I was wondering about, like, Cardonald. That's where I'm fair originally. And... I wasn't doing any content creation, and I had done it in the past, it felt like a real life dream, it didn't feel like one of them ones when I'm I'm living in an alternate reality or nothing like that, it felt like just a normal day, but I wasn't creating, I wasn't making it, and I wasn't consistent, in the past week I've not really been consistent with content, and don't get me wrong, I have been busy in other areas, but I've not been uh, giving it the due and care attention that it deserves, but uh, I had that wee depressing, thought, oh, what am I doing? What is going on here? It was like, it was like, a sense of feeling lost, a sense of, I don't know, been in no man's land. And uh, I got up the day and I was like, right, I'm getting getting some content done. So I've just uh, recorded three videos for the social media and I'm like, I'll get a wee podcast done. Because the podcast, as much as I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to this stuff, right? So I did a podcast, I did a social media thing, I've got a production company, I'm in the middle of making two documentaries. I'm pretty much doing all of that myself, apart from the documentary, Big Sean Toll for social sessions, uh, me and him are doing it together. Um, we've got a plan in place, so where we're we'll going to actually take it, and take it on a much larger scale than a documentary itself, but that's uh, that'll be the main to be seen. Basically seen, I'm not telling you, you know what bastards, you know what I mean? But, uh, aye, so I'm really, really busy with stuff, so, but a lot of the time using the term busy, it's an excuse. And I was, I've was i been mad for excuses, and I've been mad for fucking pointing the finger at everybody else, whether it's in somebody else's fault, or I'm not doing as well as I should be, and they're doing better because they've got more opportunity. It's all just fucking bullshit. And uh, I'm starting to really unravel that about myself. You know what I mean? I'm no co-signing my own bullshit. I'm no buying into my own bullshit. And a lot of the time, I can't even get away with it these days. Where maybe I'll have a thought, as I say, I'll use... As an example, oh, I'm too busy. That's how I'm all doing this or that. You voice in my head over like that. Are you, but are you too busy? Are you just kidding yourself on? More often than not, I'm kidding myself on. And I'm just misappropriating my time. And I think we can all be guilty of that. And I'm, I'm, that's the fucking main reason why I left my job. I worked four on four half, night shift, was because there was four days. I would get, well, I'd say three and a half, maybe three, because you're counting the day after night shift, it's not really a day after, because you're fucking, your eyes are fucking plastered to your arse. But, uh, it was only a few days, a window, then when you're working night shift, you, you don't get me wrong, you could get stuff done, but you're fucking, you're not running at a fucking normal capacity. You know what I mean? It's quite draining. 
Plus as well, you're about to get yourself to the gym, you're about to get your fucking everything in order and all that kind of stuff, plus you're about to get a decent sleep. And I'm realising right now, see, I, I, I'm a daily, I, people sleep daily routines, I like a daily routine, I like getting up, I like stretching, I say I like stretching, stretching is quite a necessary part of life for me, it's just I train at quite a high intensity, so stretching's naturally, I've noticed whenever I don't stretch, I, you put yourself at much more risk of injury and I have been injured. And the common denominator is that I've no been stretching. So I like just having use of my body. You know what I mean? I don't like being a fucking big stiff as fuck. Just so if any kind of starts to shit, I can fucking hit you for all directions. You know what I'm talking about? I'm like a fucking gust of wind. But uh, I like to get up, do my stretching, jump in a cold bath. Sets me up for my day. You know what I mean? Wakens you right up no matter what way you're feeling. A cold bath will wake you up. Then I meditate. It just helps clear the heat. It's like all the debris. All the mental debris, it's, it fucking just helps kind of get, it's like getting a, a, a brush and sweeping it all into a pile and just fling it in a dustbin. And that's what a daily routine does for me. It sets me up in my day. A lot of people slate it and all that kind of shit. And I notice the people that slate it are always greeting face bastards. That's just what I notice. Is it linked? Who knows? But uh, I see doing these kind of things and having a set of structure in your life. And when you're doing that and you're busy, it, it allows stuff like that allows me to kind of carry on and do what I'm doing for the rest of the day. It helps me set my intentions for the day. Sometimes I'm like, Ugh. it can be time consuming. I remember my daily routine used to take me like two hours in the morning. Two hours out of your day is a bit of a chunk, especially if you're doing that before you do anything else. But I've kind of, I've shortened it down, so it's only like about an hour. Well, I mean, some people might be like, Ugh, an hour, but. It sets me up for the day, it gets me ready and gets me going. But lately I've uh, I've started I've took a new notion that I basically want to start fucking being a bit more responsible. And that's in my life and and and, and just my, my role that I play. And it's not all about me. And it took me a long time to fucking realise that. Up until now and I say I've realised that it's not been an epiphany, it's been a kinda you know what I mean? A slow awakening, if we want to say that. And don't get me wrong, a lot of what I'm doing is for myself, and that's and I'm, there's nothing absolutely wrong with that. If you want to do something for your own credit, for as long as it's internal, if you want to do something to impress somebody else, it's a finite resource, is what I'm trying to say. But if you're doing stuff that you enjoy, it's not causing any harm to others, I do my music, I do my sketches, they all that because I enjoy it. You know what I mean? And part of that enjoyment is other people enjoying it. That's not the sole reason I do it. But it's good if you make something and other people like it. It's good, it's a nice wee feeling. It's like an added bonus. It's like getting dessert with your dinner. You're not relying on it to keep you fed. But it's just a wee sweetener. You can take it or leave it. So, with that as well, it's I did have this notion lately and I keep getting these, like when I'm making content, I'm kind of like, ah, right, it's good today, but sometimes I'm like, ah, I want to be making fucking decent money at this and I don't know what people make in YouTube. See, on this channel, I've made fucking next to nothing in terms of what I make directly for YouTube. Maybe made a hundred quid the full time I've been there. I've been fucking posting this channel for like four years. About a hundred odd quid. Try to get monetized on YouTube. I don't know if it's a Scottish thing or if it's just the type of content, but it's hard to get monetized. The real money is where you make isn't sponsorship. You know what I mean? If uh, people sponsor your podcast, but and, and I'm going to say this right. If you look below, you see subscribers nine point eight odd k. Where the fuck are these? You dirty bastards! Because when I'm putting out podcasts, I'm lucky if I'm scraping the thousand mark thousand views, and I don't get hung up in views, but then I'm like, alright, come on to fuck, what are you doing, what are you watching, so for me to approach sponsors, when the views are adding up, and to be honest, I take some responsibility for that, because so, I'm no weekly consistent, and it's easy to throw your, your, your toys at the pram, when it comes to stuff like that, it's frustrating when you're putting hours, I, I don't know about many other people, I know for a fact, I'm one of the few people that films, produces, does everything they sell, does that make me a busy idiot? Probably. I could probably outsource, but sometimes see when you build something up to a certain degree, it's it becomes your baby. Where you don't I just hand it out to some fucking nugget that's just gonna pure fuck about with it. 
because I'm quite, it was always, we're always looking to kind of progress the product, you're always wanting it up at a level, but you don't want to honour it to somebody that's going to fucking tarnish it, you know what I mean, or just create shite, it's like, this isn't a learning curve for anybody, but the thing is, you need to be willing to pay a certain amount, and I'm willing to pay people, but to pay it on a regular basis, it's like, it does, as I say, if there's not much money coming in, what's the point, it's just, it's going nowhere, in terms of the money, in my opinion, when I could just date myself, but I think, see, doing that, it allows me space to talk to people that actually want to talk to, rather than just try to just fill fucking seats, which uh, I can have my felt guilty at in the past, just I'll get the but they might do the views, all these kind of things, and it's really no important, I'm realising another thing, I'm like, right, if it's not about the money, it's not about the views, what is it about? It's about the message. Yeah, I remember talking to Big Sean, it was Big Sean told the other night, and uh, we are talking about how, like, if you're going, mainly Zoom one, see Zoom podcasts, you don't really do well, and I can understand that, because we're talking to somebody in Zoom, there's delays, it's just not an authentic human conversation, I'm not saying the people on the Zoom are being inauthentic, but it's just no real, you know what I mean, it's it's artificial almost, it's just no enjoyable, so, uh, when you're putting time and effort into recording these podcasts, and the only day, like, a couple hundred views and all that, it's a bit disheartening at times, you're like, ah, what the fuck, but, the thing I've realised, man, it's like, you could be then you could post a video that gets, like, a million views, of fucking nonsense, and that's usually the stuff that does the views, the stuff that is pure crap, pure shite, but, uh, See the stuff, like, it does a couple of hundred views, but it is, it's got a powerful message. You don't know whose lives have been changed as a result of seeing that video, and whose lives will continue to change in the future when they see that video. But how many views is somebody's life worth? I'm going to put a number on that, would you? And that's the way I've started to kind of view things, like, what is the message, what is the purpose? And you, you don't realise, and some people might be watching this like, ah, pull your head out your ass, five old big man. Probably a bit less polite, but along the lines. But people really do say to me all the time, I met a guy yesterday, he recognises he was on the phone, he hung up his phone to talk to me, <laughs> Bit of a big deal. But uh, he started talking to me, he's like, I love your stuff and all that, he's like, I mean, I don't really watch your stuff on TikTok and all that kind of stuff, so I was like, I'm proud of you, you could be watching a lot worse stuff than mine, and uh, I was like, i up to you, he's like, I'm just going into, it's like the hub or something, it was just on Argyle Street, uh, he's like, I've about seen about a house, I'm homeless, and I'm like, all right, brilliant man, and he's like, I keep it up and all that kind of stuff, and then uh, just give me a nice wee positive boost, and I was thinking, man, that guy's homeless, if you're watching this, mate, I don't even think I caught your name, Guy's homeless man, and he watch, sits and watches my stuff, and uh, I, I hope it distracts him for like, if he's in a, like, an unfortunate situation right now. Stuff like that's powerful, man. And the thing is, you might think of something as like a daft video or me just talking nonsense, but there might be somebody somewhere. It's really, it's keeping them for tip me the edge. I remember I done a. It was Big Sean Tool's podcast, fucking hanging out his ass in this fucking podcast, didn't I? And it was uh, myself, Sean, James Dockett, Tommy Sheridan, that. And it was like a panel podcast, you should check it out. And Tommy was saying about how along the lines of kind of, should I may, maybe be using my platform to kind of educate the youth men about what kind of the work, real world situations and that kind of thing. And I totally get where he's coming from, but see, the thing is, see, before somebody reaches my content, they've usually had about five videos that are showing you all the world atrocities, all the, the bullshit and politics, big pharma, fucking his hair, all, all, all this pure negative crap that makes you just despise life and life in this planet, makes you feel that you're in a shit position, that you've got no control there, and these hierarchies, these elites that are running the world and they're fucking you over because you're working class and you're poor and you're struggling to fucking get money in, you're just constantly stressed. I don't need to be the sixth video that adds to that, you know what I mean, my, the part, the role I play, is I distract people for that, because that's why drug problems are so evident, that's why alcohol problems are so evident, that's why people are escaping, because, know the fact that the world is shit, but they're constantly being shown a side of the world that's negative, and just makes you feel lost, and hopeless, and in fucking despair, and right now, 
It is more evident than ever that there's places in the world that are fucking reeking of despair. Oh, I mean, there's atrocities going on in the world you can't even comprehend, and then there's people turning a blind eye, but it's just fucking madness everywhere you look. You sometimes ask, has it always been madness? And now we're just getting shown it. It's in our face, because it essentially is in our face. Like, who do you know goes a full day without looking at a phone, or a laptop, or a tablet, or some form of screen? Unavoidable, in it? My job that I like to think my purpose is as much as my because it's a two way street for what I do. I make a skit, a skit. I love my content. There's nobody that likes my content more than I do, and I'm not afraid to admit that. You know what I mean? I like fucking dressing up like a dick, ripping the piss out myself, ripping the piss out other people. It's a laugh, and I enjoy putting it out. Sometimes people love it, sometimes they don't. It doesn't really affect my process. But I can help break that fucking, that stream of negativity that is constantly polluting people's minds and just makes them realise, wait a minute, life doesn't need to be serious. You know what I mean? It doesn't all need to be doom and gloom. It doesn't need to be death and destruction and heartache and horror. Sometimes it can just be light-hearted, you know what I mean? Because that does exist in the world. And you're even looking at comedy now, it's like, oh, comedians can't say this, comedians can't say that, people getting cancelled, it's like, the people that distract us, for the atrocities, the abominations and all that, they're getting fucking taken down, and unless you're this woke fucking PC comedian that tries to please everybody, because that's the thing, this is the culture and the society we live in, everybody's trying to please everybody. You know what I mean? Politicians are trying to please everybody and see if you're watching this right and you're in a marginalised group, whether you're trans, gay, whatever. See, politicians, they don't give a fuck about your cause. They really only care about your vote. That's it. That's why the trans issue's political. You know what I mean? That's why they're making it they're such a push because they just want your votes because they realise there's a large number of votes. They could not give a fuck about you. Sorry to say it, but it's the fucking fact of the matter. You make no difference to their lives. I'm all for inclusivity, but inclusivity doesn't work without pissing somebody off. Somebody gets fucked off somewhere. You can't please everybody, so you just, what you need to do is pick a group to piss off. And I'm not saying that's a conscious decision, but that's the way the world has always been, and it will continue to be. You're not going to get a run it, no matter how much you try and do it, or try and try, and try and kid on your trying. Because half of these people will make out that they're all for it, but in actual fact, they're pissing somebody off and they know it. You know what I mean? So they're just going like that, right, you, I'm happier pissing you off than I'm up pissing them off. And as I say, I don't discriminate against anybody, but uh, I'm just honest and I'm aware of it. So rather than get caught up in the bullshit and listen, man, see if you're fucking been discriminated against, victimised, whatever, and... In my vicinity, I will stand up for you, you know what I mean? If you're undeserving of that. But I don't need to make my opinion and my beliefs on this wide fucking complex issue public. I don't see the need for it. Because there's people that are more educated about me than politics. I'm not very educated on it. I know there's fucking, there's definitely... There's definitely separation. There's definitely a distance between the poor and the upper class, if we so to speak. And there's definitely people in power whose interests serve a smaller population than the one they represent. And I've done it in the past where I've spoken about it, out of anger, out of frustration. And it's just opening up a fucking can of worms. Especially when you're on a, a larger platform like mine where you're kind of open to a lot more public scrutiny, and I'm not in fear of people not agreeing with my opinion, it's just I'm not, um, I've got an opinion, but I'm willing to hear the other side, I'm not, I'm not for championing a cause, I've got an opinion, just like anybody else, I've got an opinion, we've all got opinions, and if you've not got opinions, then what you're basically saying is, I don't want to argue anybody, and I don't want to piss off anybody, you know what I mean? We're human beings, we're meant to have opinions. So uh, if you're saying you've not got an opinion, you're making a conscious choice not to either have an opinion or voice an opinion. So, as I say, I'm happy to voice my opinion, but 
I just don't see room in my public platform to do it. Many people do it. Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, that is a hotbed for political debate. It's, I don't know if it's just me. You'll be able to tell yourself this or tell me this in the comments. Whenever I go into Twitter, it's just pure negativity. Pure negative shit. It's never anything good on Twitter. Never. Arguing. This cunt's rang despicable. This is another thing, right? See me, you ask me about content creation, you ask me about videography, you ask me anything that, that I'm passionate about, I'll be able to tell you how much I love filming and how I love making skits, I love acting, I love doing all these things, it makes me happy, it allows me to express my creativity and I'll say it with a smile on my face. I've never met a happy person who's involved in politics. Never. I'm not saying they're unhappy. But when it comes to politics, there's always something wrong. Nobody's ever like, ah, I like it the way it is. Surely there must be somebody that's like, ah, this is the way I want it to be. They've got it right. I've never met them. No, I mean, everybody's got an issue with it, and it's like people are telling me I should be more involved. Why? So I could be fucking miserable like you. You understand the saying, ignorance is bliss? Call me ignorance if you want, I don't give a fuck. That's my wee electrolyte drink, you know what I'm talking about? This is how I escape the, the atrocities of the world. I just drink this fucking tablet thing you get a fucking Asda. Some creatine, some BCAAs and I'm out my fucking bush. See, I should, anybody that's watching, you maybe have a, a supplement fucking brand or no any kind. Yeah. Santa the Aras, mate, I'll sell it. But I, for me, life is good. Is what I'm trying to say. Life is really good. Life has been shit for a lot of years. 90% of that has been my own fucking doing. Responsibility. It's a hard thing to take. But it's rewarding, man. Because the uh, biggest thing about responsibility, the clues in the word, you need to be responsible. See, for me, I was a black belt in blaming others. Everybody else was at fault for my issues, where I was in life, my upbringing was to blame, fucking the Tories were to blame because I was skint, because I was sniffing gear every weekend, everybody was to blame. But when you blame somebody else, you put the solution in somebody else's hands, and in order to return the best results for yourself, not very often... Somebody else is going to give you the solution for that. You kind of need to find it yourself. Very hard to find that if you're pointing outwards. When you look inwards, accept responsibility. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that as if I'm some sort of fucking spiritual guru where I'm sitting at the top of the mountain and uh, I do nothing wrong. And if I do do it wrong, immediately I take... Nah, I'm fucking... I still get in situations to this day where I maybe don't take responsibility. And don't get me wrong, I would like to think, and I do think, for the most part, I eventually come run. But initially, I'm like, nah. Nah, I'm not fucking wrong. Nah. And uh, sometimes speaking to somebody and then just kind of airing that out and you kind of go, right, right, okay, okay, okay. Maybe I'm in the wrong. But honest to God, see, the amount of relationships I've rescued, my fucking just destruction or fucking whatever the fuck else, the negativity comes off the back of it, I've avoided just be going like that, you know what, fair does. Maybe I was in the ring. It's a powerful thing, man. Big Peter Parker's uncle was right. Great power comes great responsibility. Because uh, this is a thing I'm realising as well. I talk about my following, right? I have got a fucking decent sized following. I took that for granted up right until recently. Because, uh I mean, it was just numbers on the screen. It was views in the video, you know what I mean? It was comments, It was that was that. Well, me, but I'm realising the amount of people that probably watch my stuff and I've probably never spoken to them. you get people that will comment, people that will direct message you, you'll meet people in the street, but there's a lot of people that are watching that I've really taken a lot. Like that guy I met yesterday, had I not met him, I wouldn't have had any idea he existed because I never spoken to him up until yesterday. So I'm starting to kind of realise the responsibility I've got with what I'm putting out there. And see, when I done the ayahuasca, there was a point during the purge, during the ceremony, I was like, Bleh! and I was like, 
drinking water, but see when you're under ayahuasca, your body kind of takes over. It's a weird thing to say, so my body was kind of doing, and I was just kind of letting it. And it was, I was drinking water and fucking, I was rinsing my mouth out like mouthwash and like that. And then I was getting like toilet roll and fucking wiping my tongue. The message I took for that was to kind of essentially stop talking fucking shit, but to be aware of what I'm putting out there, what I'm speaking about, what opinions I might voice, that kind of stuff, because you never know who's listening and who's actually taking on board what you're saying. And that's why if you watch my content, if you're one of the few that watch everything I do, you'll see many different layers and sides to me. Whereas this, I would say this is me, my most authentic self. And there's times before that I feel as if I've been a bit of a letdown in the past. See when people watch my stuff and then they come onto the podcast. In my head, and nobody's ever told us, I imagine they think this is going to be like just a spin-off of the content shit. I'm just acting like a pure fan of doing sketches, skits and all that. But no, I'm just talking, I'm just being myself. Just talking to people and just getting a chat and forgetting the camera's there. Aye, it's a... Uh, but now I'm realising as I'm getting older and it's recovery's a fucking plays a big part in it. I'm just suddenly like, ah, no, this is the way it's, it should be. And the thing is as well, it's slit. As time goes on, I'm more and more accepting myself, who I'm at at this moment. No looking for the next hit saying, I want to be at this stage, I want to be on the big stages. And I do, I want to f- receive worldwide acclaim and I'm working towards that, but I'm doing well. I mean, I'm doing really good and I'm realising what is the importance, what is the important things in life. I really want to go and work with like, young people now, I want to see, I want to go into jails, I want to fucking just, I was going to use say I want to touch them, <laughs> but touch them emotionally. No, I mean, uh, you can fucking, see if somebody cuts this out, you're a wrong and right, you're the beast. But uh, I just want to connect with people, use my experiences man, because... That's the thing is, is like we've all got experiences that are unique to us, but they're no unique experiences because a lot of people have, have gone through it. The thing is, the thing is, the fucking powerful thing about your experience, right, is that somebody else is probably going through the same thing and doesn't know what you know in order to navigate it, in order to get through it, in order to deal with it. Suddenly, that experience that you probably take for granted is vital and fucking helping some cunt get through a tough, tough part of their life. So see that, that's, to me that's responsibility, I've got a responsibility to fucking to be authentic at the price of views or fucking engagement or fucking algorithms and fucking all that shit. Like using what I've got, the, the where I've put myself and be like, ah, listen, and just using my experience. That's why I try and be as authentic as I can in these fucking podcasts. I don't even try, I just talk. Because I find myself when I'm talking to people, I don't open up like this. And I think it is where when I'm talking to people, I don't know, It's sometimes I feel as if I need to say things in a certain way, whereas the new I'm just talking. The words will just come and I'll just speak. And there's no... I always the term fear. There's no fear I meet somebody going, aye, but... In, because that is what a conversation is, it's a to and fro So, when I'm talking, I'm uninterrupted. I can just open up the floodgates and let it come out. And to be honest, it's, it feels natural. I don't sit down with a plan of what to say. Like, I'll take a word, responsibility. See, when I sit down to do these things, I'll go, at ah, responsibility, I'll talk on that. That's it. Because I'll have an experience like the past week where that'll come up, it's like I select a fucking word to describe an experience and then I'll just talk and then it'll just come. That's all this is. I don't know what other people do in the terms of these one-to-one, I don't fucking script nothing. I just talk and it just comes out. Is that a fucking higher power channeling some fucking philosophical wisdom to some people? Or am I just talking shit? The thing is, both of them are going to be right, both of the analogies, depending who's listening. Some people will be listening to this like, ah, fucking hell, he's bang on. That cunt has described where I'm at right now. Some cunts will probably fucking turn that up, you know? It's fine. You know what I'm talking about? 
This, but this is done for me. I've already got it. You're watching this now. This is in the past tense. I've got what I was looking for already. Hopefully you can get something else for this, man. But I, to all you that have watched for the start or have continued to watch through my consistency, inconsistency, my ups, my downs, man. It's been a journey. And I appreciate you being on this one with me. And this is like a roller coaster. You just got a ride in. It's up, it's down, it's all around. So, stay on board, man, because I feel it's going to get a bit more interesting. But I'm going to go enjoy my Sunday, people. And I hope you enjoy yours too. Like, subscribe, and don't get wide. Catches!